Hey guys, it is time to take our power back, to dream big, to celebrate, to play, to enjoy creative self-expression as we are coming into the first full moon of the year happening in the sign of Leo on January 25th, 2024. The exact full moon happens at 12.53 p.m. Eastern time, so make your adjustment for your location in the world. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the energy showing up around the full moon and some of the other amazing things that are happening, activating in the week after the full moon because we've got some amazing accelerated energies going on right now that are very conducive to manifestation energy. I'm gonna talk about the big picture themes first and then I'll talk about the specifics and I am gonna read some cards for us all today as well. We have an emphasis of earth element and fire element. Fire is exuberance. It ignites our passions and enthusiasms. And in fact, this full moon happening in Leo is one of the elements that's bringing in the fire. We also have the prominence of earth energy, which is manifestation energy. So in and of itself, this play between earth and fire is igniting ambition within all of us, deep within our souls, to be on the journey of creating, experiencing, manifesting, based on what our deepest enthusiasms and pure passions for life are right now. The other thing that I wanna talk about, which is a bigger picture theme that's happening, on January 27th at like 2.53 a.m. or something like that, Uranus goes direct in Taurus. And when that happens, all planets are gonna be direct from January 27th through April 1st is when we have the next Mercury retrograde. So we've got this window of time here between January 27th and the 1st of April where all planets are fully awake, fully ready, to express, to create, to get new momentums flowing forward in life. Not only that, but on February 1st marks the halfway point between winter and spring. Can you believe that we're halfway through winter already? Oh my gosh, to me it's going by fast. Anyway, this halfway point between winter and spring is the most potent and empowering time for all of us collectively to do a little check-in with ourselves around what we are intending our experience to be for the entire year ahead. This can include you know, any goals that you wanna create or manifest, whether those are inward goals of personal development or things that you're wanting to create and birth into the world. This week, especially really on February 1st, which is that halfway point between winter and spring, is the most empowering day of the entire year to really get clear and decided upon what your intentions are, what your creative intent is for 2024. And I'm telling you, the energies right now are super supportive of assisting you in creating or manifesting whatever those intentions are. So let's go ahead and dive into that energy a little bit. We've got the full moon happening in the sign of Leo, which is opposing the sun. And what else is it opposing? Pluto that just went into Aquarius. We still have a conjunction between Pluto and the sun. Every time we have a full moon, it's always opposite of the sun. So it's illuminating, illuminating our awareness. And this axis between Leo and Aquarius is about self-expression as it relates to the collective. Leo in and of itself is very creatively expressive typically enjoys being social, being out and about, engaging with people, sharing their skills. And with this full moon being opposite of the sun and Pluto in Aquarius, ultimately we're all having a deep inner sense or feeling or ambition around 
wanting to find ways to utilize and express or contribute our unique talent, skills, and abilities in ways that are supporting the collective unfolding right now. And in case you haven't noticed, there is a very evolutionary, revolutionary energies going on. We can see this in the political climate that's going on right now. And of course, individually as well, I feel like there's this energy now that Pluto has shifted into Aquarius. You may even feel this as well, like almost like you've had this sudden shift of renewed ambitiousness after what feels to be like months and months of dredging through mud. And that dredging through mud had a lot to do with Pluto being in the last degrees of Capricorn. I did just upload a video that is exclusively talking about my insights about Pluto ingressing into Aquarius. So I will link it up here and down below. So I won't repeat myself about the details of Pluto in Aquarius, but just know here, it's very transformative energy. It's rebirth, it's renewal, it's inspiring all of us to really sort of level up coming into our highest self, coming into that next wave of expression and how we want to be present in the world, how we want to be contributing to life. And that energy starts right now, so taking a quick look at some of the other things that are happening here around this full moon, looking at the chart, I can see that Pluto and the sun are also making a square aspect to Jupiter in Taurus. Jupiter just went direct. Jupiter in Taurus is big manifestation energy, but squaring the sun and Pluto feels like the manifestation energy that Jupiter and Taurus is bringing is really focused right now on creating space for anything that we want to activate, empower, create, and moving forward by releasing, letting go, bringing to completion, anything that's not aligned with whatever our renewed vision and inspiration is within ourselves right now. So we have that going on. And then Jupiter is also making a positive trine aspect to Saturn, which is in Pisces. Saturn in Pisces, I've talked about it before because Saturn's been in Pisces for a while now. But this really, on a, on a soul evolution level, this really brings in a sense of personal responsibility around our soul growth. And making the positive a sextile aspect to Jupiter is saying that this is a time where we're intending to experience or create things that serve our soul, things that bring deeper meaning and purpose. This isn't like superficial manifestation time. This is like, you know, taking time to smell the roses, the things that really mean something to us, the things that feel substantial to our soul's experience in this life. Jupiter is also making a positive trine aspect to both Mars and Mercury, which are both in Capricorn. So this is a really great energy that inspires us in follow through, taking action, getting things done, especially tasks or projects that might be connected to our long-term career goals or things that are connected to goals that have anything to do with any form of communication. And then Mercury and Mars are both also making a positive trine aspect to Uranus. Uranus goes direct on January 27th. This is like the last planet that we've been waiting for to go direct because all other planets are already direct. This energy brings in accelerated progress. It is an energy of self-discovery. It's evolution. It's innovation. It's sudden unexpected developments. It's like, boom, things that we've been procrastinating on, suddenly we're getting a bunch of stuff done all in one day. Suddenly we're motivated to take care of a bunch of things. I feel like Jupiter is a big player in the unfoldment of the energies that are happening around this full moon because Jupiter is squaring Pluto and the sun and the moon and making that positive sextile to Saturn, which we've already talked about 
and making the trine aspects to Mars and Mercury, and also making a trine aspect to Venus, which is also in Capricorn. The Jupiter Venus trine is significant because Jupiter is in Taurus and Venus is the ruler of Taurus. This inspires us to create beauty. We want to feel healthy. We want to feel that we're in our best energies. These positive energies of expansion, acceleration, promoting forward movement, progress, development, feels like it really is the energy that we've all been wanting to shift into and now the energy is here all we have to do is be present and allow ourselves to just move in the directions that we feel inspired to this energy of all planets being awake all planets being ready for action again is with us all the way through April 1st. And even with April 1st, it's only Mercury that is going retrograde at that point. All the other planets are still going to be direct at that point. So I really can't emphasize enough how significant of a time this is to put your, you know, whatever last remaining boost of positive energy that you need to affirm or put into your intentions for yourself for the year ahead. Now is the time. I'm going to go ahead and pull one card for each sign so we can get a little message for all of us here. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle the cards. I think I have not said yet. I did talk about the elements, but we also have an um, emphasis on the cardinal modality. The cardinal energy in astrology is the motivating energy, the initiating energy, it's taking action, it's setting things in motion, getting things going. So that energy is only further supporting everything else that I've already talked about. Okay, I am setting my cards out here. We're doing one card for each sign. And when I call your sign, this is going to be for if it's your sun sign, your rising sign, and your moon sign. So listen for all three. We're going to start with Aries. And let's just see what comes up for Aries here. Aries gets the nine of swords. Let's see where we're at right here. Yeah. Aries gets the nine of swords. Now, this makes sense to me because Chiron is in Aries right now. And it just went direct near the first of the year, bringing us all into an energy of experiencing a level of healing, like we've achieved a level of healing. And the Nine of Swords card, when this comes up, this speaks of like the epitome of despair that can happen when our mind is riddled with worry, fear, doubt, uncertainty, concern, and it is time to let that go. We also have the North Node in Aries right now. Some of us, like me, could be having a North Node return. So this, if you are having a North Node return, you are at the very beginning of a super potent 18-year cycle of growth. This is the time to shrug away anything that is doubt, worry, concern, uncertainty. We have to let all of that go. That is your task right now, Aries. Let's go ahead and come into Taurus. Taurus gets the Eight of Wands. It is showing up reverse, so I'm going to talk about that. So both Uranus and Jupiter are in Taurus right now, which is only supporting accelerated progress, self-discovery, evolution, manifestation energy. It's time for Taurus to prepare for takeoff, prepare to get new momentum going. The Eight of Swords, I'm sorry, the Eight of Wands is the energy of new momentum. And when it comes up reversed, typically it means that that momentum of growth is happening internally, okay? So 
if you are a true Taurus, you have already been really aware of what's brewing within you in regard to your goals, dreams, ambitions. And it's going to be time to start taking action as we're coming into the end of the month here. So your time of being on hold, waiting for the time to be right, that time is up because as soon as we get into that Uranus direct on January 27th, it's go time for all of us. Okay. Gemini is getting the queen of pentacles also reversed. The queen of pentacles reversed for Gemini is the energy of self fortifying, fortifying your groundedness could be a part of that. Gemini has a tendency to have its head in the clouds a lot, right? It's, it's very mental. It's very lofty, which is great energy. It's inspiring energy, but sometimes we need to ground and center and just kind of bring it back down to earth. And that's what the message is for Gemini. Cancer is getting the tower card reversed. The tower card is an energy actually that can be associated with Uranus. At times there are some references to that and that's because it is an energy of sudden unexpected change. And that is exactly what the tower card represents. Take a look at where you might be holding on to things that are actually holding you back and be willing to let go of those things and trust the universe, trust life and see where it takes you. Okay, we're coming into Leo now. Of course, the full moon is in your sign. And this is interesting for Leo because Leo is getting the hermit card reversed. Sharing wisdom that you have gained during times of introspection in the past year. Inspiring others by sharing that wisdom. This is making me feel that Leo is ready to be vulnerable and share more of a depth of self. Virgo gets the strength card. This is the path of heart. This is self-leadership. It's courageousness. We don't always have to calculate the details of every possible scenario of outcome before we take a step forward in life. This is more of a time to be in your playful spontaneity. Libra gets the Hierophant card. This is the energy of being your own guru. The Hierophant card rules things that have to do with higher education, meaning esoteric studies, esoteric arts and sciences, life philosophies. This is also the energy of really embodying your own uniqueness and individuality following your own path, dance to the beat of your own drum right now. Okay, let's go ahead and come into Scorpio. Scorpio gets the king of swords. The kings in the tarot are all about empowered self-leadership. One of the phases of expression on the most base level of Scorpio is the archetype of the scorpion, which can be stinging in nature. So on one level, it feels like the message for Scorpio is to rise above the more primitive, unconscious nature of you and step more into your empowered self-leadership through the power of discernment, which is connected to the higher octave of Scorpio, which is represented by the mythical bird, the Phoenix, rising into higher vibrational frequencies of yourself, leading with the power of confidence and trust in your ability to have clear discernment. Discernment is awareness without judgment. Sagittarius gets the page of wands reversed. I feel like Sagittarians are being asked to pause, reflect, recenter, refocus, 
before moving forward. And then living in a balanced way between playtime celebration, because we are in that energy, but not completely forgetting about what feels like the deeper compelling of soul purpose for you. Okay, let's come into Capricorn. All Capricorns in the world right now, I think, are celebrating the fact that Pluto is no longer in the vicinity of your sun sign. It's been, what, 15, 16 years of cultivating, which has been awesome, but we're ready to graduate, right? Okay, so Capricorn gets the Page of Cups. It feels like the Page of Cups is inviting loosening up a little bit, a little more playtime, a little less structure, a little more playtime, creating space in your life for socializing, friendships, those types of things would be connected to the Page of Cups. So take that into consideration over the next few weeks. All of these messages that are coming through for us are for the next few weeks between the full moon until we get to the next new moon happening in two weeks from now. And then moving into Aquarius. Aquarius gets the four of wands, celebrational energy, creative exuberance. This is the energy of enjoying celebrations within your home, within the homes of other people, within chosen community, coming together. So for Aquarius, this can very much be more of a social next few weeks for you. It feels really good. Let's come into, last but not least, Pisces. Pisces gets the lover's card. What are you feeling compelled to dedicate yourself towards, especially in regard to, I want to say your spiritual path, but I'm not meaning like just your path of your spiritual growth practices, but your spiritual path as far as meaning and purpose, filling your life with things that feed your soul moving in the trajectory of what your soul calling is. And so this lover's card, this coming together, the unity within yourself, especially with Neptune and Saturn in your sign right now. So my next upload is going to be an upload about all planets being direct. So you can look for that over the next few days. I always love hearing your guys' input or feedback or sharing your experiences about the energies that are showing up. So definitely feel free to comment below. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. All my love, blessings, namaste, and I'll see you all in the next video.